Hello, everyone. We are really excited to be part of the proceedings and welcome to our session, Deja Vu. Let's think about security again. My name is Shripad Nargauda. I'm a senior software engineer at IBM Research. My current uh, research focus is on driving the innovations around DevSecOps. I'm the chief architect of Code Risk Analyzer, the DevSecOps solution we delivered to IBM Cloud last year. And I'm very happy to have joined with Paolo. Hi, my name is Paolo Dettori. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM Research in Norton Heights, New York. My current research interest is in cloud technology, containers, and containers orchestration. I've been working for the past few years on several projects related to Kubernetes technologies, such as the IKS, IBM Kubernetes Service, and the IBM MCM, the IBM Multi-Cloud Manager for Kubernetes. In the past few months, I've been working with the cross-plane community and currently a maintainer for the cross-plane provider for IBM Cloud. Thanks, Paolo. So we are, we are seeing a lot of momentum, a lot of interest across community and across the industry in embracing this cross-plane, right? So we believe it's time for an intervention, right? We need to take a step back. We need to see what are the security implications of this. So if we, we see, we, we have seen that misconfiguration is still a number one cloud vulnerability, according to the National Security Agency. And there is a high cost associated with such misconfigurations and it is growing, right? We have listed a survey which shows that the cost can grow in trillion dollars. More recently, Gartner has published a report where they are estimating by that by 2025, 99% of the cloud security failures are going to be responsibility of customers rather than of service provider. We'll put these numbers in perspective when we uh, discuss the role of developers and importance of DevSecOps in the cross-play. Now let's uh, revisit the, the security landscape from the vantage point of four different actors. Now, first, we have a cloud provider. The cloud provider, they are focused on uh, improving the experience for the uh, cloud users, right? There is a tremendous momentum in uh, onboarding new services on the cloud across AWS, Azure, IBM. There are more than 150 products and services. We looked at some of the, uh, the, config, the service configuration exposed to the user based on their respective Terraform module inputs and variables. And these input parameters, input con the configuration parameters, they can grow and, uh, in, in basically 20, 30, or even 60s. Right? And uh, this is very easy for users or developers to make mistakes when you have so many uh, inputs to care about. Again, there are different modalities the cloud provider uh, enables for accessing and changing configurations. That includes user interface, CLI, APIs, and some programming construct built on top like Terraform and Crossplay. Right? So it, it adds a new layer of complexity because now we need to secure these additional layers and make sure that they are secure. Now let's uh, think about the security director, right? So as a security director, he needs a visibility and awareness across the security standards. He need to evaluate the posture of his cloud infrastructures, his cloud workloads. And now there are some industry standards like NIST, Kubernetes CIS, uh, Docker CIS. They, they, they cover uh, various security controls across workload, across Kubernetes uh, core services, and across cloud services. But even the, the sheer numbers, if you look into the numbers, they are huge. So we need automation. And there are some emerging standards like OSCAL that provides this control related information from the security standards into a machine readable format. So it can be consumed and auto easily automated. Right? There are some enterprise solutions available like AWS Security Hub or IBM Security and Compliance Center that power the central management of the compliance uh, across organizations and regulatory guidelines. Now let's look at the developer because the developer is the one person who is programming the cloud. Now, if we revisit our days with the OpenStack, I remember writing a lot of shell, custom shell script to provision virtual machines to configure network. Uh, we are evolved from that. Now we have standard programming construct like Terraform, Ansible, Crossplane uh, to enable this, uh, to standardize this cloud programming model. Even the DevOps, it has ensured that we have consistency across build, test, and deploy practices across industry, across communities. 
and now the emerging uh, practices of DevSecOps, which is essentially putting developer in the center of the security practices. We don't, uh, we, we don't expect developers to be a security expert, right? and we want to keep it that way. Uh, and, but we want to enable developers to uh, identify the problems, any security problem early in his development process. And so we want to automate these security checks and embed them into the existing development practices. We don't want to invent new development practices, new tools also for developers to learn. But whatever their existing practices are, we need to strengthen them with the security postures. Also, we need to translate these complex security measures uh, that developers hardly understand and provide them actionable recommendations that you don't care about the configuration, the CM6 uh, control in NIST, but if you just change this variable name, or this add this, uh, change the value of this uh, firewall from on to off, that's the kind of feedback we want developer to give. Now as a community, right? Uh, again, putting that uh, Gartner number in perspective, uh, that 99% of uh, uh, the faults are going to be blamed to the developer. We need to empower developer with the right set of tools. We need to, uh, we need to educate developers on the uh, importance of the DevSecOps practices. And that's how as a community we can help and grow. Now let's revisit uh, what are the current DevSecOps practices across uh, infrastructure as well as application code. Now, if you look into uh, the Git repositories, all the artifacts that are present in the Git repository, we can broadly classify them into four different categories. We have some artifacts, application artifacts, like build artifacts, which includes your Docker file, our package manifest, that, that says how your application is go going to get built. We have deployment artifacts, like all deployment channels and in chart that dictate how your application is going to be deployed. And finally, configuration artifact, the config maps or network policies, and our infrastructure uh, uh, as a code artifact, like your Terraform, Crossplane, uh, Ansible. Uh, and we have existing uh, uh, DevSecOps solution that uh, are embedded into this Git workflow. So whenever a developer makes any change, this uh, security CI pipeline is triggered. It access this source artifact, it performs various checks, like on the build artifact, we determine all the dependencies, uh, all the open source packages, we determine if the, uh, there are any vulnerabilities, what are the licenses that they are using, what are the risk of using those uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, on the deployment artifact, we analyze uh, if there are any misconfigurations, uh, like you haven't uh, set some resource limits or you're running as a privilege when it's not required. We also measure the, the risk of such misconfigurations. Okay. Uh, we, we check the security uh, con, uh, the uh, configuration artifact to see if there are any application misconfigurations. Like if I'm deploying some applications, I have a set uh, the right configurations for it. Am I using the right protocol? Am I using the right certificates? And finally, the uh, infrastructure artifact like uh, our Terraform or Crossplane, we can evaluate them and identify any uh, misconfigurations or security holes early in the development while we are actually before even we're using it for provisioning. And then once we have the CI pipeline, our artifacts pass through the CI pipeline, we diverge, right? We have a separate CD pipeline for infrastructures like admin schematics that uh, takes our infrastructure as a code artifact and provisions the associated resources on the cloud. And then for the application, we typically produce some intermediary uh, artifacts like our images in the registry. And then we use CD pipelines like Argo CD or Tecton and deploy our applications on the cluster. We typically have this second layer of protections in the form of admission controller uh, or gatekeeper, uh, where we perform some enforcement checks. Like I will, uh, it, it's basically a second layer of protection. Uh, and once our application is deployed, our cloud services infrastructure is provisioned, we have separate monitors. We have continuous monitors to see if the new security issues get popped up, if someone gets uh, malicious activities happen on the cloud or on the workload. And all these uh, signals from our continuous monitor gets fed into a centrally managed compliance dashboard where a security director can easily evaluate and uh, see the posture of uh, the, uh, the overall posture, uh, security posture of its infrastructure. Now we'll see how uh, the crossplane is affecting this existing uh, DOSCOS workflow. Uh, Paolo? Thank you, Shilpat. So first of all, uh, the first observation is that we crossplane application infrastructure can share the same Kubernetes resource model, the same KRM. 
So that basically allowed to now use the same infrastructure, the same tool chain for uh, basically doing the pipeline for uh, both uh, application and infrastructure uh, deployments. So the DevSecOps pipeline for apps infrastructure now is the same. We can use the same tools uh, because now I don't need to introduce different tools. For example, if I'm doing a deployment with Terraform, I have to use the Terraform CLI, but here I can just use the existing uh, kubectl um, CLI for doing deployment of uh, application and infrastructure. In addition, uh, we have now the possibility to have a single pane of glass uh, where we provide clear feedback to developers about potential issues on the deployment of application, uh, on the configuration and vulnerabilities, as well as the infrastructure configuration. And so we can say that cross-plane is certainly simplifying the model. If we go to the next chart, we we'll see how the pipeline that uh, Shripad was uh, illustrating earlier on, where we had two separate uh, pipeline, one for infrastructure and one for application, now can be uh, basically merged into one single pipeline because I'm sharing the same tool chain. So uh, in this case, uh, I don't need to have a separate, for example, Terraform deployment pipeline, but they can have one single pipeline because I'm using basically the same model, the same tool chain. So I can do things as well here using, for example, Argo CD, using Tecton. I don't need to uh, basically introduce uh, something different. So this actually simplifies um, and makes it more accessible to developers. Also the ability now to provision the infrastructure they need uh, based on the application requirements. And this is really what we see as the application-centric provisioning and configuration of infrastructure uh, when we start using cross-plane in this picture. Next. So as an example scenario, we can see now um, how we can actually leverage all these ideas and this concept with cross-plane. And we have here a cloud native app uh, where we have three microservices, uh, UI in front, a command microservices, and a query microservices. These are standard CQRS pattern. And on the back end, we have a cloud object store. This is essentially IS3 compatible service uh, from IBM Cloud. For this particular example, we're using the IBM Cloud provider. Um, but of course, we could use any other um, resource uh, infrastructure a cloud provider uh, with cross-plane. And uh, we are actually running this on a Kubernetes cluster where we have a cross-plane runtime installed. We have the IBM Cloud provider. We have also the cross-plane Helm provider. So we do the deployment of the Helm application using the Helm provider. And we use uh, uh, the cross-plane resources uh, for uh, the IBM Cloud provider. Uh, and composition to uh, configure the cloud object store and other related resources that I need for my configuration. And now let's take a look uh, next to how actually the insights um, I can get look like. Uh, first, a few words also on the IBM Cloud Provider. Um, this is something that uh, is still an experimental release. We released uh, this last year. I'm currently a maintainer for this project in the cross-plane community. It provides a number of available uh, features such as support for the IBM um, uh, resource controller API that allow to provision a number of IBM cloud services from the IBM cloud catalog and provides also features such as goal templating to shape credentials uh, based on the requirement on application needs and supports currently also the IBM cloud database API that is used to configure uh, certain characteristics of IBM Cloud Database services such as auto scaling or scaling, or whitelist, etc. And also, we support currently the IAM uh, API, so we can actually configure also security constraints um, around the services. We also allow to import uh, existing cloud services uh, in the provider. And as a roadmap, we are currently uh, adding more support for more cloud APIs for IBM Cloud and looking also at code generation from open API definitions of the provider. 
let's take a look now to the kind of insights uh, I can get uh, when I basically run uh, that exemplary application into my uh, single pipeline. Uh, so first of all, I can get information about the uh, configuration of my deployment. And in this particular case, um, I'm getting uh, to my PR the, that there is some issue uh, as a comment in my PR that there is some issue with um, uh, the resource limits for my container. So as a developer, I will know that I need to adjust uh, those resource limits uh, so that I can pass the checks. And then I get also some report on uh, vulnerabilities or packages that I'm using uh, in my uh, application, in my microservices. So I had to update those uh, packages to, to the latest version. Uh, and finally, and this is the, say the interesting part that uh, Crossplane allow us, I can get in the same pane of glass also uh, information about the security of my infrastructure configuration. And all this uh, configuration, of course, uh, is somehow dictated by the, um, the security controls, uh, such as NIST security controls or other standards that the compliance officer set up uh, for me as a developer. And then, of course, I get here more clear indication of exactly what I need to do in order to be compliant to those controls. For example, in this case, I need to um, make sure that the cost um, service um, uh, allow only a certain range of IP um, to, to, to basically invoke the service. Uh, I have to make sure that I set up a log DNA for logging and uh, tracking basically the API calls to the service, et cetera, et cetera. So this basically allow me now to have this very clear feedback for the developers. Uh, and then uh, I can actually uh, make sure that uh, my application is compliant to the security controls uh, that we are set up. Thanks. Thanks, Paolo. So we are thinking like, what will be the sustainable security model, right? So uh, just some thoughts, like if we make a security a default configuration for every cloud service. Right? So that would essentially means that as a developer, whenever I create some cloud resource, it is by default, it is secure. I'm, I'm asked by uh, basically it's mandatory for me to provide all the necessary security controls or security configurations and uh, only configurations that are available are to disable the security guards so uh, as a developer i'm well aware whenever I'm, whenever i'm making any security misconfigurations right and whenever i'm doing it right it's basically obscure for me it's oblivious to me so uh, i think this oblivious security is going to be very important now, if you look into the stack of uh, the standards that are available, right? So for virtual machines, uh, we have uh, standards like CIS, NIST security control that uh, guide us on how we should configure virtual machines, how we can we should configure our operating systems. Then we have Kubernetes uh, uh, playing on top of that, where, where we have some CIS benchmark, uh, which guide us on how we should conf configure our worker nodes, our master node, our core services. For our workloads, we have Docker CI benchmark, NIST PCI DSS, and uh, uh, all lot many other uh, security controls. For cloud services, we have again some NIST security controls. So essentially, we have security controls across the stack, but the cross plane, right? So these are this is essentially the the question that we are trying to ask: that are the cross plane are the runtime in the runtime providers, right? Uh, do we consider them as the uh, workload on top of Kubernetes? and they be subjected to the workload security profile or they are part of the uh, co core Kubernetes control plane and need to be subjected to the Kubernetes CIS uh, uh, profile, security profiles, or we actually need a separate category to model the security profile for cross plane. Uh, with that, uh, we'd like to conclude our presentation and thank you for your time. And we are open for questions. Thank you. Thank you everyone.